Hello everybody and welcome back to today's video. Today we are checking out the 3.73 update of Fate UHC. This came out a few days ago and I am so excited to show it to you because we added so many new things and so many user requested things that um, I hope everybody is happy with it. And I'm going to go over the whole plugin, what you get with the plugin when you purchase it, what extra you can get, what other add-ons you can get, all of this I'll be going over in this video. So it may be a little longer than normal, but make sure to stick around until you learn about the whole plugin, see all the configure files and all of that good stuff. Stuff. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come to MC Market and you're going to buy the plugin. Right now it stands at 30 US dollars. Um, and I know it can be high for some people. The reason it's this high is so much time has gone into developing it. I have to kind of base it off of what the plugin's worth. Uh, we have 26 five-star reviews. We support Discord bots. We made our own Discord bot you can have, and I'll explain that later. We support the Twitter API. We hook into UBL. We, we do all of this stuff. So there's so many things, and it has to be worth the price of that. Um, and this is in competition with other UXC plugins, which are even expensive. We hold, have more features than more expensive UXC plugins. So I would really recommend checking us out. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So, Fate UXC, we have 40 plus scenarios, party and FFA modes, combat loggers, all this good stuff. Um, you can see we have a bunch of old videos. All these videos will be redone this week, so you can get a fresh look at how to use all of our new systems. Lots of them have been recoded, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'll show you all these things in game so you have a nice little look at it, um, but of course you can come to the plugin page and check it out as well. Here's the list of scenarios, but be noting it, 3.74 is our scenario update, which means there's a lot more scenarios coming soon, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Now, our Discord bot. Let me go into a little bit of information regarding the Discord bot. So. We used to use Discord webhooks. Uh, Discord webhooks allowed us to announce starting, uh, announce winners, stuff like that. But we've gone ahead in 3.73 and recoded this. We created a Discord bot, and you can invite your bot here. We even made a whole wiki page on how to use it. Now, FateUXC does uh, allow you for free to use this Discord bot for um, linking your servers, setting alert channels, setting alert roles so you can notify different people on your Discord servers and stuff, enabling updates, setting whitelist stuff. Though, some commands on the bot are premium and require a Patreon subscription, including leaderboards, whitelist, and stats. The reason we do this is because we need to host the databases for those, and we handle all the data, so uh, we had to charge for that, but it is only a $3 Patreon subscription to be able to use those features, cancel anytime, all that good stuff. But the majority of the bot is free. Um, and then in extra information regarding it, we don't have an official test server, but you can contact me on Discord if you would like a test server set up, I'm happy to show you. Um, and then we, in terms of configure files, we have 16 of them, which allows you to change almost everything about the plugins, command, permissions, all of this good stuff, I'll show you all those in a minute. Um, and for your commands and permissions list, you can find them on our commands and permissions wiki page, and there are so many, it takes so long to read through all this, so make sure you read through this when you get the plugin to learn all the commands and permissions and everything, it's very, very uh, recommended. And you have the whole wiki page on them. So you can go here, you can click Fate UXC and view all of these wikis on the placeholders, Twitter API, boss bars, action bars, pastebin API, mob rates, death message colors, um, build UXC, placeholder API, all of this. And then we also list all of the default configure files here for you to take a look at so you can go see what you can change in the plugin, see if it works. Anyway, very, very cool. All right, so let's go ahead and exit out of this and let's get into the plugin. So you can see I've already have it starting up here and it actually tells you when it's doing everything. So when it's populating, switching between stuff, what it's hooked into, what leaderboards are running, all of this good stuff. So you can see all this from the console log and take a look at it if you wish. You also get a unique server ID every time you start your server. The server ID will remain the same, but your game ID will change. So your game ID will hook into the Discord bot so you can whitelist people for different games throughout Discord if you have that on them. Uh, you also get placeholder API support in every single message which I'll go through in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my play, uh, plugins folder, go into the Fate UXC folder, and you can see all of our configure files here. Now talking about placeholder API support, if we go into our language.yml file, every single plugin or every single message, pretty much 99% of the messages can be changed. Um, and all of these, every single one, supports placeholder API. So you could put whatever placeholders you want in here, and they will work with placeholder API, which has been highly requested and one of the hardest things I have ever spent my time doing, going through every single message in a plugin and changing it into placeholder API. Really, really annoying, but I did it anyway, and now you can do this. So you can get all of these. They support color codes, placeholder APIs, fully changeable to whatever you want, which is very exciting. And then 
let's go through the things from the beginning. So you have your commands.yml file where you can actually change the permission for this command or add extra aliases and all of this for every single command in the game, which is really, really cool. This is another suggested feature by users. Um, pretty much everybody wanted this. So make sure uh, to change them how you wish, whatever you want to do. You then get the config.yml. You don't want to mess with this this much. This is for world border, which FateUXC uses to create the world. Unless you have some reason to touch this, you don't need to touch this at all. You have config management, which is where uh, in-game you can set your configs and it will auto-save here. You don't want to mess with this unless you know what you're doing. Everything can be configured in-game anyway, so there's really no reason to mess with the config management screen or file. You got your cosmetics.yml. This is new in 3.73. So to 3.73, we added the ability to add and remove cosmetics, set the permissions for them, how many points they require in-game. So if you want to make it worth zero points in-game and you get points by winning and killing, if you don't want that, you can set it to zero and just have donators get unlocked with the permission. You can also just in, uh, remove it by just completely deleting this uh, item here. You can change the effect or you can add new types of effects and stuff depending on your server. Completely customizable. So thank you to the users who wanted this. I know our cosmetic system was a little outdated before but this brings new light to it, allows you to configure it, and of course you got all of them for both menus here. Very cool. Thank you to the users suggesting that. Then you got your data.yml. This is for your files and uh, your MongoDB database, which is required to run. I do recommend using either Clever Cloud, which is, does ho host free databases, or using DigitalOcean. Um, both are linked in the description of this video as well, but I do recommend doing DigitalOcean, just getting a $5 uh, droplet and running your database there, rather than using a free host because they can restrict stuff or go down. Uh, DigitalOcean is much more stable in terms of databases. And then you got your debug.yml. This is where you can set your pastebin API and stuff if you want to um, and we do recommend doing this because some of the stuff in game actually allows if an error it sends you a paste bin link to send to us if not just ignore this you don't really need it um, you got your discord.yml this is where you can set your uh, auto announce to true um, you got your server ip the discord tag author name change the types of text that comes into your discord notification through our new bot which is super exciting so make sure to stay tuned for more information on that i'll do a whole video in the future on the just a discord bot alone i can't wait to show that with you you got your gui items.yml where you can change every single gui item which we support the names of them the text of them all this stuff so you can see activating config toggle practice all this stuff can be changed in here which is very cool so make sure to check this out if you're interested in changing any of the gui items we use then you got your items.yml and this is what you get when you join items without party so if you're not on a party join items with a party what do you get then what do they do spectator items and then obviously you also get mod items so all of those can be changed in here you can make them do different things change the name of them the durability of the slot they're in what action they do all of this good stuff can be configured as well we already looked at the language.yml now, the leaderboards.yml. This is where you can set the location for all of your holograms. I recommend doing this in-game rather than messing with it in here, but you can change the text of them if you want to change the language or the format or anything can be changed in there. You got your party command.yml where you can change the text of what Slack party returns with. So if you want to remove someone from seeing a command or anything, you can do that in here. And that's the same with UXC command.yml. You can see you can also just remove and edit what it looks like when it sends to you. Uh, then you got the practice.yml, which is brand new in 3.73, which allows you to create block removals. If you want to create like a build UXC practice where you can set the time for when it's removed, how many players is in your practice, two players take fall damage, and what kit. You can set the kit in game so you don't have to mess with this with all these different codes and everything. And then, obviously, you got your scoreboard layout.yml, which allows you to change the scoreboard at each of the different times here. So you can change these to your liking. And you also got the variables. These are for, like, the action bars or boss bars, and everything can be changed down here. And then you got your tweetconfig.yml, which is where you create put all your Twitter API stuff, and you can create unlimited tweets you want to send out, and you can use that from in-game with slash tweets. You got your UXC command.yml, which is the same thing I just showed you, just changes the UXC command. And then this is our main file, the UXC configuration.yml. This is where you can change the prefixes, if the lobbies are enabled, what world names, uh, if it's 500 scatter random, locations, leaderboard formats, tab related colors, uh, hide lobby players, boss bar, action bar, join messages, start messages, chat format, vote system, border settings, world generation, populators, mob stackers, swap all biomes, scenarios, uh, rules, holo uh, the holograms removed, but hologram stuff, um, practice arenas, auto start, data sync stuff for UXC games if you have that add on, sounds, uh, config items in chat, what you want in the voting items, uh, 
Bungie announced, enabled and disabled different commands, the time formats, different other commands, flower power stuff, and all of that, which is very cool. And you also get to configure your build UXC kit, the scenario uses to your liking as well. So that is all the configure files. And now let's hop in game and I can show you what it looks like in game. So the first thing I want to just highlight a little bit is all the holograms you can have. You can see I have them all here. So every single leaderboard in the game has the ability to become a hologram. Just make sure the spigot you're using allows hologram API and uh, allows all of that. So if you don't have that, that probably won't work. Um, but if you know your spigot supports hologram API, just make sure it does and you can see it will be in game so i'm going to go ahead and switch over to my minecraft cam here so you don't have to worry about seeing notifications like those comments and now that we're in game i'll show you what you get so you can see we have our items at the bottom if practice isn't enabled it will say practice is currently not enabled you can do this with flash practice enable and it will just turn on or actually practice on uh, and it will turn on and you can see if I join practice, it will teleport me. I haven't set the practice spawn, so it will just keep teleporting me in midair. Um, but of course you can type slack practice off again and leave or disable the practice arena or whatever you want to do. You got your configuration. So if you're an admin and you don't want config info to show in chat, you can set it to config info in a GUI and you can see this will be active throughout the game. See the different config info. You got create party. So if you're in party mode and I am in this case, I'm going to just create a party and you can see a party has been created. I can also disband a party. Um, um, in a new uh, beta type sense, we have the party management GUI where you can create a party, disband parties, party list, and party chat. Um, this is brand new. There's going to be a lot of things coming to this soon, so don't worry. Can't wait to show that with you, but that is available. You got your stats, so you can see all your stats like kills, deaths, points, wins, games played, bow shots, uh, blocks, mine, golden apples. Then you also got the leaderboard, so everybody over all of those things. And you also get the or leaderboard where you can see the individual blocks of how many people have mined each one. So those are also available. And of course, you can click the leaderboard's items as well to open them or just view them on the holograms. All right, so another cool feature which we added are staff alerts. And you can toggle these by doing stack staff alerts and it will open a new GUI. So you got mining alerts, click to disable and enable all of these PVP alerts, uh, IPVP alerts, help op alerts, and report alerts. So if you have staff members who wanna play the game and don't wanna get those alerts, you can call, of course toggle them off and you won't get them. Or you can just completely toggle off the commands in the configure file um, to your liking. So you can have all of that as well configured on and off depending on whatever you want to do. Um, and now into the main commands of the plugin. So the main command of the plugin slash config admin, and this will open up the UXC settings. This was recently redesigned um, in the latest update. So thank you to everybody who gave their input to this. You got your save and load configs. What this does is you can create a config and set all the scenarios and then save it in your configure file. And you can see rush UXC created by face slap load on enable is currently disabled load rename it or delete it. And uh, that saves to the uh, config management.yml file. So you can load these on startup and have automatic starting things and everything. Uh, then you got your configurations. This is what the menu you saw earlier, but this time I can actually click these to turn them on and off and uh, change. So cheers rate, it's currently five. If I wanted it to be six, I just type it in chat and it's now six. So that's pretty cool. And if I want it to be five, let's type it back to five. It's back to five that easy pretty cool to do that um and then you can do config admin again and edit your scenarios you can see which scenarios are currently enabled and if you click in here it will take you to the scenario menu where you can click them and you can see it creates them on the here and in chat if there's more than five it will just change the scoreboard to slack scenarios so you don't have a problem with them uh causing damage to the scoreboard or causing errors stuff like that so that's pretty cool and then obviously config admin also has alerts menu so you could open this directly toggle your practice on and off from here as well you can have your discord menu to send your start message and the winner message if you don't do it automatically. I do recommend just setting it up automatically throughout the bot. It's that easy. And then of course you also have your server information. So it shows you the plugin version, your server, your server IP, your port, the game ID, and the game um, server ID as well, which is pretty cool. And all of this can be configured in the configure file um, to enable and disable different features, all of that good stuff. So all available in the configure file. Now, a lot of people are asking, can you respawn people? Yes, you can. You can do slash respawn uh, if the game was running and then their username and then uh, a reason. So their reason is that, but if they don't exist, they obviously can't respawn them. So you can respawn them. You can toggle PVP. You also got slash UXC as a command. So you could start it, set the lobby, reload locations, check relog, lag and performance, stop loading, reboot, set PVP. So all of that is available to you as well. Uh, same with slash party or slash the size, disable them. Want teams of 5,000? Sure, you can do teams of 5,000, though that would probably never work.
because if you had teams of 5,000, you would probably lag. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's pretty much the lobby and the setup. Um, it's pretty much drag and drop setup, except for MongoDB. You do need a not MongoDB database for everything to work, so make sure you have one, or just get one through Clever Cloud or DigitalOcean. Whatever you use to host MongoDB, you will require. And then it's setting the spawn, setting up your default games, and getting ready. Um, auto start also is supported, so you could either do slash auto start and then set a time, like five minutes. And you can see game starting in five minutes. And if you have auto announced to Discord, it will automatically announce when it's starting to Discord, which is pretty cool. Um, but you also have the option to auto start at a certain um, point of players. So if you want to, to auto start the game after 20 minutes after 100 players get on, you can do that as well. So you don't actually have to have a host and it can just run your pre-setup configure file, which is also highly requested by so many users. And of course, if you want auto start off, you can do auto start cancel or auto start off and it will turn it off. And you don't have to auto start it anymore. To start the game, you do slash UXC start. I don't have a second account on right now, so I will not start the game, um, but I'll go ahead and bring one on and we'll get started. All right, so now that I got my second account on the server, we can go in and start. You can do Slack UXC uh, start if you want to force start it, and it will say um, you have successfully disabled practice and you've started uh, this thing, and then it will go to scattering players, how many players have been scattered and how many are remaining. You can see at the top of the screen there was that action bar as well, which is pretty cool. Um, even if it looks like you're in the block, you're actually not, so when you spawn, you'll just fall normally. Um, this is just a Minecraft thing. I can't really control that. Um, so, see, just fell normally and I'm actually outside of the block, which is pretty cool. Uh, it will say the UXC began, border, scenarios, all the rules, so you can configure the rules in the chat as well, how fast you want them to send. And then at the scoreboard, you can see you count down on final heal, um, and the action bar as well. You got grace period, how many people are alive. You can change the border with slash border, and you can, uh, decrease it at your rate. You can also force PvP with slash UXC PvP, and, um, it will force PvP. So if I wanted to set the border, let's say, to a hundred I'm gonna do border 100 and it says shrinking to 100. So you can see it's border now counting down in six seconds. And then on the, on the chat, it will count down as well. And then it will teleport us in that time to the shorter border. And you can see we are now on a shorter border. And you can see the border is here and then it is bedrock, but then at the top it's glass. So you can see you can't escape regardless of if you try to dig down, it'll just become gas and then you can't get through. So um, very, very uh, cool system to prevent people from getting out of the arena and you shouldn't have issues with it at all. And then of course you can configure the flat at 25 but i'm just going to go ahead and shrink to 25 and you can see it will be uh flat at 25 and that is a feature that a lot of people have requested uh is it just being completely flat and that is an option excuse my dog good dog um so you can see i just have it flat at 25 and i can uh the grace period's still on so i won't be able to hit them but i will be able to once that starts and so to toggle pvp you can do uh, you see set pvp and it'll say pvp has been activated you then can pvp people and uh there you go so we had that uh scenario on so it made this but it said you have slain them you can do slash mlg to accept the mlg water bucket challenge thing and then you can jump down and you can see i did that so yay um also you can do slash respawn the username so respawn noodle 0711 for s um but obviously the game still has to be running you can't respawn the person who won so um very very cool and if you have any questions or issues with it, please let us know. I can't wait to share it with you all in the future with the 3.74 scenario update. So just keep working on it, and I'll see you next time.